Hello, and welcome back to Tyrion Cuthbert, Attorney of the Arcane. My name is Baby Dennis, and last time we started Case 5 by meeting up with Celeste and Steelwin, who just kind of came into our home without really much permission. But after getting a letter, seemingly from Garrick Pierce, who knows the identity of Celeste's real parents, we decided to go to this one event that seems to have all the nobles, you know, gathered here. I don't know what it is, they don't tell us. But after wandering around, meeting some new nobles, such as Sybil, and, uh, well, meeting up with Garrett Pierce, an accident happened, or something happened. We were knocked out, we saw Beatrice at the last moment, and we woke up just to find a bunch of nobles dead, including Garrett Pierce, Bon Sanctus, and the recently met Sybil. And the biggest thing is that Steelwind was arrested for this case. So, uh, whew, that's a lot of stuff that happened last episode. And we're here to find out what happened, so we're going to continue with the investigation. I believe they told us to go to the prayer room? Yeah, you can see the body outline. You arrive at the prayer room. It's now swarming with the knights from the Inquisition. You find yourself staring at the chalk outline of where Pierce's body once was. Oh wait, it just occurred to me. If Steelwind is the one that is arrested, that means she's not prosecuting. I wonder who's going to prosecute us then? Huh. The only time in an Ace Attorney game where they, like, pull out a random attorney out of the bag at the end was, uh, in, in the first Ace Attorney game where an, uh, Von Karma came in because it was the same situation where the prosecutor was arrested. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry about that, slight spoilers, but I'm pretty sure most people watching this would have, would have seen Ace Attorney. <laughs> you find yourself staring at the, yeah. You can't help but feel a little uneasy. You've been to plenty of crime scenes before, but even if you were unconscious, you were here when the murder happened. It's a little unnerving knowing how close you came to death. Are you okay? Y yeah But now it's not the time for an existential crisis. Steelwind's future counts on you figuring out what happened. You still don't know what happened after you fell unconscious. The Inquisition believes that Steelwind broke into this room, knocked you and Pierce out, and then killed him. But you remember it clearly, you saw Beatrice before you lost consciousness. The more, there's more at play here than you realize. Celeste also fought Steelwind after Beatrice knocked you out. Perhaps she can tell you more about what she, uh, how she was acting. Oh right, one thing I did want to mention is that when I was editing um, the last video for Case 4, I actually just realized that, um, uh, what was her name? Beatrice. She sold her soul to the devil, but it wasn't that demon that she had as, as her familiar. She actually kind of sold her soul to a specific demon. It was something Lord of one of the circles. I think it's, I think it's Eris. Yeah. So I believe she's now under Eris's beck and call, as we saw uh, from last episode. So uh, that'll be interesting. Um, let's present some stuff. What can you tell me about this? Sorry, I don't think I'll be more okay. I presented myself. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm only a little drowsy from that sleep spell. You shouldn't push yourself if you feel tired. I'm sure that the King's Guard are fully capable of investigating what happened. She has a point. Considering who the victims were, whoever orchestrated this must be on high uh, must be high on the political hierarchy. Any of the nobles here could have done this. The only person you can trust now is Celeste. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, are you okay? What do you mean? You've been a little tense since the murders. I I You try to lighten the mood a bit. Were you worried about me? I was! When I saw you lying next to Pierce's body, I thought you were... Uh, oh, um, s sorry. I didn't mean to worry you so much. But I'm okay now. I'm not hurt. Yeah, I know. Aww. I know Steelwind could never do something like this, but I saw her. Even if she, if she wasn't her usual self, her attacks were definitely real. I don't know what to believe anymore. All the more reason for us to get to the bottom of this. I can't believe after everything he did, Pierce is just... gone. I'm sorry that we couldn't get the answers you were looking for. Hopefully, something else turns up. I honestly don't care about that anymore. I'm just glad that you're alive and safe. Oh wait, <laughs> we have a lot of people here, including the dog! <laughs> yes. I forgot he showed up for a little bit, that's why. Alright, let's examine this room. Uh, well, are these gonna be the same? There are three stained glass windows. They look quite nice. Um, is that it? <laughs> Other than, you know, clear dead body? I guess so. There's a chalk outline where Pierce's body probably was. It looks like he was sitting against this altar when he died. And the blood stains seem to imply that the fatal wound came from his chest. 
The autopsy report would be, really be helpful here. Hopefully it doesn't get updated too many times. You should ask the commander for a copy of it the next time you see him. Alright. That's a lot of magic. Oh god. There are traces of conjuration magic all over the room. That must have been left by Beatrice's sleep spell. Oh! There's a trace of transmutation here. It's all over the area around his body. Interesting. Did the murderer wound him using a transmutation spell? Like, create water. I mean, not create water. Control liquid? I forgot. Shape liquid. There's a trace of necromancy on the ground here. It's probably from when I tried to heal you. I'm amazed that she knows so many spells now. That's really impressive. Alright, talk about the, the fight with Steelwind. Let's review what happened. Before Beatrice knocked me out, we heard a commotion outside and you went to investigate. Can you tell me more about your fight with Steelwind? What was she like? Well, she wasn't her usual self. It was like she was in some kind of daze. I noticed it even before she attacked me. Something was wrong with her. Oh yeah, and she didn't even respond to me when I tried to talk to her. It's like she didn't even recognize me. But from what Lord Asclepius said, she would have been acting more erratically if she was affected by Mage Blight. It's possible that you fought someone disguised as her. I guess that's possible. But whoever they were, their magic was still extremely powerful. And several members of the Four Pillar families were assembled here. It could have been one of them. We should speak with Commander White when we get the chance. The Grand Cathedral was closed from the public for whatever was happening here. They probably have a list of everyone who was present when the murders happened. This means that whoever did this was one of the nobles that was here today. Beatrice Frega. Beatrice can cast invisibility, so I doubt she'd let you see her. But she did you see her at any point when you were fighting Steelwind? Uh, C Celeste? Sorry, I don't know. I was too focused on staying alive. I've actually been meaning to ask you about that. Aren't you really strong? I've never ever seen you- I've never even seen you break a sweat in a fight before. Well, she was really tough. It was terrifying, honestly. Oh, she had her danger senses when she was talking about Eris when we first met her, so maybe it was her. It was mainly her magic. I've never fought someone with spells that powerful before. She didn't hurt you, did she? No, but I got pretty close. I think she realized that she couldn't beat me, so she just ran past me into the prayer room. I saw her tar real target was Pierce. But why? Did you see the moment that she murdered Pierce? N no. When I arrived at the prayer room, I saw you and Steel went unconscious on the ground. And Pierce was already dead. Already dead. And I'm assuming that you didn't see Beatrice anywhere. No. She wasn't there when I arrived. How did she leave the prayer room without Celeste knowing, noticing? Did she turn herself invisible? Celeste's testimony. During the afternoon of the murder, Celeste McCoy heard a suspicious sound and investigated the hallway leading to the prayer room. There she saw a Arya Steelwind fighting the guards there. Arya didn't respond to Celeste's questions and attacked her as well. The two fought to a standstill and Arya pushed past her. When Celeste arrived at the prayer room, she found Tyrion and Arya unconscious and Pierce was already dead. She didn't see Beatrice Frega at any point during the altercation. Hmm, I see. Timeline. So, we showed up at the prayer room for the meeting at 1.50pm. Then we interrogated Pierce for about half an hour. That's when we heard the commotion outside and you went to investigate. So it was about half an hour, so that would have been about 2.20. Right. I think Beatrice knocked me and Pierce out 10 minutes after that. How long did you fight Steelwin before she pushed past you? We definitely fought for a while. It must have been at least 20 minutes. Whoa, wow. Fighting for 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, that's, that's quite a long time. After that, she gave up on fighting me and ran into the prayer room. So there's a 10 minute gap, approximately. Which means that Beatrice somehow got into the room during your fight. That discounts my theory of her disguising herself as Steelwind. You regained consciousness at 3.12pm. That means that you were knocked for more than 40 minutes. There's still a lot of unknowns about what happened. You'll need all the pieces if you want to put the pu this puzzle together. Anyways, it looks like you found out everything you can here. You should move and take a closer look at the other crime scenes. Alright, where should we go? Wow, this all... Wow, look at that! That room's burnt! Super toasty. You retrace your footsteps and find the common room. This was the last place you saw Von Sanctus and Sybil before everything happened. If I recall correctly... I think Von Sanctus was in this room when he got, uh, <laughs> ignited. And Sybil was, like, outside, I think? I don't remember. 
You look around to see that most of the room has been entirely scorched. You can still smell the scent of burnt cloth and flesh in the air. What happened here? Was there some kind of fire? Yeah, we think the perp lit a fire. Yeah, we think the perp lit a fire using magic. As you enter the room, Commander White approaches you. He seems to be accompanied by the typical legion of knights. Commander White. Hey, kid. You investigating what happened too? S something like that. We just want to figure out what really happened. <laughs> you and me both. Nothing about this case makes any damn sense. I'll be honest. I could really use your help in trying to figure this out. Ah, uh, he likes us now. He originally, I think the only part that he didn't like about us was that we were uh, Ruby's uh, protege, but since we kind of fought her in core, I guess he's just on our side. <laughs> Honestly, you're not sure who you can trust at this point, but the commander is leading the investigation, and he's bound to have information that will be useful to you. Ah, uh, I need to see this first. Even now, the sunlight is shining through the stained glass windows. It looks like the fire reached them before it was put out. Ah. Uh, and nothing else here. There's a chalk outline in the center of the room. This must be where they found Von Sanctus' body. There's even bits of ash there. It must be burnt fragments of the body. Yeah. And there's like one more thing here. There are scorch marks all over the room. The fire must have spread pretty far. Yeah, it was probably going for a while. No one even noticed it until Prince Alaric told the King's God that he saw smoke. Interesting. We should speak with him and see if he saw anything else. Ah. Ooh, that's a lot of red. There are traces of evocation in a bunch of different spots around the room. We think the perp threw a bunch of fire-based evocation spells around to stop the fire. And the King's God used a bunch of water-based evocation spells to put it out before the fire spread. Huh. That makes sense. With that knowledge in mind, there's nothing out of, or out of the ordinary here. Oh wait, there's this. There are tra there's a trace of abjuration magic in the center of the room. I didn't notice that before. <laughs> huh. Do the traces overlap with the body? Kinda. It's sort of square-shaped? Square-shaped? I can't see traces, but there, there also seems to be a square-shaped outline around the body. You're right! They overlap perfectly! The area inside the square is a lot less burnt now that I look at, look at it. I'm not sure what this means yet, but it's definitely worth taking note of. Bon Sanctus. Traces of Abjuration. There are traces of Abjuration magic that forms a perfect square around the body. The area within the square seems far less burnt too. Actually, where's the- oh yeah, it does kind of match up. Yeah, he, they're, they're right, they're right. What do you think about this? Ah, uh, no one responds, I presented it to everyone. Alright, what do you think about me? Huh, <sighs> trouble seems to follow you wherever you go, kid. I can't help it. Sometimes I feel like I'm the one who's go who goes looking for it. Well, you certainly found it. It's a real mess this time. Yeah, tell me about it. I see you're still working with that mage girl. I have a name, you know. Save it, sweetheart. You may have everyone else fooled, but we've seen today what mages like you are capable of. Well, lucky for you, Celeste and I are here to aid you in sorting out this mess. Yeah, yeah. Just tell us to keep your magic under control. We need answers, not more fireworks. Ugh. Man, Steelwind's gotten herself in the middle of a real mess this time. I know, this whole situation is unbelievable. Yeah, none of it makes sense. So, how have you been, Commander White? Well, a bunch of nobles got off during what was apparently some kind of big aristocratic event. The crown is breathing down my neck to figure out what happened. How do you think my day's going? <laughs> right. <laughs> Pierce got off too, huh? Not that it changes much. His execution was scheduled for next month anyways. Eh. Uh, it's clear that she has many conflicting emotions about what happened. When this is all over, you should take her somewhere to help her take her mind off of things. Ah, yeah, you should do that. So Von Sanctus is actually dead. Honestly, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over him. Serves him right for after what happened to Justin Way. You mean Jason Wayne? <laughs> Even so, a dangerous murderer is on the loose. Neither of us can relax until we catch them and put them away. Huh? <sighs> You're always working, huh? Yep. Always working. Huh. I can't believe someone just off Sib Lady Sybil. Her family is responsible for this justice system. Have you met her before? Only in passing. And whenever I did talk to her, she always say kooky things about the universal balance or some kind of hooey like that. Frankly, 
I can never understand a word she says. Yep, fair, fair. Alright, so, tell me about the murders. Ugh, this whole situation is a damn mess. Has the Inquisition found any clues to explain what happened? We only have the basics so far. We've only just received the autopsy reports. That's still pretty useful. Do you have copies of them? Sure. Knock yourselves out. Oh, wow, he's very cooperative. All right, the autopsy report for Garrick Pierce. Died at 2.45 in the prayer room. Cause of death was blood loss. A shard of frozen liquid was found stabbed through his heart. It's very likely that this was the murder weapon. The wound also shows heavy traces of transmutation magic. And traces of conjuration magic were found throughout the room. Oh, a shard of frozen liquid stab was found stabbed through his heart. They might think it's the shaped liquid thing. Whoops, wrong thing. Because now we know that, you know, the caster can choose to freeze the liquid and solidify its current shape. And now we know that um, Celeste has it, so she might be... I hope she's not arrested for that, but she might be a suspect. At least from the eyes of the Inquisition. Also, you know, there's also a motive because he killed her, her father, but... Autopsy report for Coraline Sybil. Died at 2.18. Cause of death was suffocation. Her body was found floating in a nearby lake outside of the Grand Cathedral. Damn. Traces of transmutation, evocation, and necromancy of magic were found on the body. Okay, we've got Lloyd Von Sanctis. Died at 2.05 p.m. So he was the first one. Cause of death was suffocation. The fire in the common room burnt the body too much to discern any specific wounds he might, might have suffered. However, a small trace of evocation magic was and a burn mark were found on the victim's left shoulder. Left shoulder. Evocation. Okay. This implies that the body was hit with a fire-based evocation spell. Traces of abjuration magic were found on and around the body. Wait. Pierce was killed with a frozen blade? Isn't that similar to how he killed Flinhart? Uh huh. Sorry, I didn't mean to- uh, no, it's okay. It's still strange though. Why would the murderer kill Pierce using such a convoluted method? But actually, I want to check something. So, Von Sanctus, what magic does he have again? Abjuration. Traces of abjuration magic were found on and around the body. Hmm. Makes me wonder. Hmm. It's still strange though. Yeah. If Steel One really was affected by Mage Blight, she wouldn't have done something like that. The murder of Garrick Pierce. The Inquisition found a frozen blade impaling Garrick Pierce through his stomach. There are traces of transmutation on his blood. This implies that the murderer used shaped liquid to create this blade and murder him, which is oddly similar to how Pierce murdered Flinhar McCoy. But why would the murderer do this when they clearly had more, more lethal spells at their disposal? Pierce used this method during Flinhard's murder to leave as little evidence as possible. However, it's clear that the murderer wanted to frame Arya and leave as much evidence as possible. Hmm. Like, uh, the reason I was looking at, um, Lloyd Von Sanctus is, like, I wonder if they're using their own magic to kill themselves, like, because, uh, this shape liquid was transmutation, and, uh, Garrick Pierce has transmutation, Lloyd Von Sanctus has abjuration, and there are traces of abjuration on him, around the body, I'm not sure what that is, maybe, I'm still not really sure what abjuration is, but the only odd one out is Sybil, because Sybil had transmutation, evocation, and necromancy, I mean, here it says she was, her cause of death was suffocation, but she uses divination, so, um, I have no idea. Ah, <laughs> uh, wait, was there anything else? Oh, okay, anyways, the times of death also do seem to tell a story. If we look at the reports, the murderer must have killed Von Tanktis, then Sybil, then Pierce, in that order. Huh, I feel like that order is going to be relevant now. Oh, maybe it's not going to be the right order. Yeah, that's our working theory, too. Alright, uh, if we look at this map, we can see where the prayer room and the common room are. They're not connected in any way. <laughs> so common room is the one we're currently in. Prayer room, I think, is the where we were with Von Sank- I mean, Garrick Pierce. Balcony is here where I think- Actually, no. Sybil was found in the garden, but I thought she was on the balcony. Lady Sybil's body was found in the lake west of here. Oh, okay, no, never mind. This is a garden, not the lake. So, it's probably- Yeah, she was on the balcony and then maybe she was here. But since the Grand Cathedral is built on a cliff, there isn't an easy way to get there in such a short amount of time. So that raises my next question. How did Sybil's body end up in the lake? Um, uh, Sybil was, uh, uh the murderer threw Sybil 
It, from a balcony. Yeah, okay. So, it's, yeah, the lake is here. The Grand Cathedral is built on a cliff over the lake. And the Westward Balcony just happens to be right over it. Yep, okay, so my memory serves correct. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. We even have a witness who saw Steel Wind there. Really, who was it? It was High Speaker Theon Arceus. That's gonna be the guy who was on the cover, wasn't he? Isn't it? Theon Arceus. Maybe he's gonna be the prosecutor. We don't have anyone else that can serve as a prosecutor, and he's on the cover. Well, even though, you know, technically, I guess, um, like, <laughs> based on the pattern of all the uh, suspects being on the cover of each case, you'd think that Aria would be on it, but no, he is. Hmm. A high speaker? He's the shot caller of the Church of Bahamut. And he stands at the top of the religious hierarchy, from what I hear. He spotted Steelwin near the west balcony and noticed that she was acting suspiciously. He called out to her, but she just ignored him. She just ignored him. So she knew that he saw her, but did she didn't attack him? Yeah, he really lucked out. But if she was having a psychotic episode, he would have noticed that. From what you said, all she did was ignore him. You're right. This whole Mage Blight story doesn't really add up. Either way, we'll just have to talk to him directly to find out more. Putting that aside, there's something else that's strange. What's that? It's about the order that the murders occurred in. What's so strange about the order of the murders? The murderer killed Von Sanctus, Sybil, and Pierce in that order. This means that the murderer went to the common room, then the west balcony, then finally the prayer room. But well, if we look at the map, the murderer's route seems a bit strange. Uh, so it was... It's kind of sad they don't show have the map now. Let's see this. Okay. So they were here at the common room, then they went to the balcony, and the prayer room. So they, they'd have to go through the nave, which is unusual. So the murderer... It's probably due to the amount of time they had, so... 205, 218, and then 245. He got to Sybil very close. Maybe it's this? No, there's a clear route between each room. The murderer would have traveled to the common room, then the balcony, and the prayer room. There's clearly a more direct path they could have taken if they wanted to murder th the three victims quickly. Oh... Yeah, they're saying like... Going from here, to here, to here is weird. It could have gone like that, or like that. I think. The murderer could have killed Pierce second. Yeah. The murderer must have passed right by the prayer room before they dumped Sybil's body. Why wouldn't they just murder Pierce on the way there? Maybe they kind of wanted to dump Sybil's body first. Or they were afraid of fighting me! <laughs> Aren't you giving yourself a little too much credit? No, she has a point. You don't understand. <laughs> Out of everyone who's fought the murderer, Celeste was the only one who didn't die or fall comatose. Anyways, there has to be a reason why the murderer deliberately chose that route. The murderer's route. Judging from the, that's each time of death, the murderer went from the common room to the balcony and then the prayer room, in that order. But that wasn't the most direct route. There has to be an explanation for that. Okay, you've created a rough outline of the murderer's actions. But the real clues will lie in how each individual murders occurred. And that starts with figuring out how Von Sanctus was murdered. Alright, that's pretty cool. Oh, we got a lot of information from that. I will say, this is a really minor nitpick, but like, sometimes looking at the maps, they're kind of extremely basic, and I kind of wish it was filled out a little bit more. <laughs> but once again, game was on a budget, so I can't really expect too much. But like, this looks like something that you could probably make in Microsoft Paint. Rest in peace. <laughs> uh, but like, it made it difficult to imagine like, the the lake west of the balcony since we don't see a lake here. And it's hard to see like, what the paths were, because None of these rooms are actually connected on this map. Uh, yeah. It do be what it is. How are the murderers discovered? How did the Inquisition find out about the murders, anyways? Did a witness come across the bodies? It all started when Prince Alarak ran up to us. He told us that he saw a fire breaking out in the common room. He also saw Steelwind there, and when he tried to talk to her, she hit him with some kind of spell. She attacked one of the princess? Yeah, but it didn't look like she hurt him. That guy from House Asclepius, Asclepius expected him, and he told us that he wasn't injured. I'm glad that he's okay, but wouldn't Arya have used a more violent spell if she was being affected by Mage Blight? 
It's possible that she was throwing spells randomly, and you just happened to get really lucky. I suppose that's possible, but like, eh. Was there anyone else nearby when this happened? I would have expected a Prince of Wyvern Guard to be under a constant guard. Yeah, that was kind of my mistake. I ordered the knights to give him some space considering what just happened. And that would be... Sorry kid, if you don't know, it's not my place to tell you. I have orders from the top to stay quiet about that. I don't know what was this event! <laughs> huh. And it looks like you'll need to ask someone higher up. It's still strange though. Why were all those nobles gathered there? Anyways, whatever the perp hit him with, it only put him in a daze. He could barely walk or talk. He couldn't even approach us until the spell had worn off. And the weirdest thing about it was that he was pretty close to where we were. But for some reason, we didn't find him until after the spell wore off. That must have been traumatic. I hope he's okay. Why didn't anyone see him during this time? After he told us about what was happening, we went to pull out the fires. That's when we saw a bunch of guards knocked out outside of the prayer room. Did you see me? No. This all happened around 3.10 p.m. Right. That was probably well after Steelwind moved into the prayer room. Celeste must have already followed her into it. The report. The Inquisition discovered something was wrong when Alaric de Wyvengard reported a fire had broken out in the common room. He also told them that Arya Steelwind cast a spell on him at earlier that severely de debilitated his senses. When the Inquisition arrived at the scene, they spotted an unconscious, the unconscious guards outside the prayer room. They did not see Celeste McCoy and Arya Steelwind. This all happened around 3.10pm. Uh, I don't wonder what they have on uh, Steelwind's spell compendium. You don't know what she's capable of. What if she doesn't have any fire spells? That would solve a lot of this. <laughs> the comatose guards. When you arrested Steelwind, I recall you mentioning that a bunch of guards were comatose. Did the murderer use some, some kind of spell to knock them out? I don't think so. I'm just as lost as you are about that. Some of the victims didn't have any magical traces on them, so we know that they're not under the effects of, of a spell, but they still haven't woken up. That's odd, to say the least. Is there some kind of common thread between the knights who fell comatose? That might help us deduce what happened to them. Well, we found all of them at the locations where Steel One was spotted. That can't be a coincidence. We just admitted that they weren't being affected by any spell. What's going on here? The comatose knights. Several knights from the King's Guard were found unconscious after the bodies were found. They have been unresponsive since the massacre, and due to a lack of magical traces, they are clearly not being affected by any kind of arcane spell. Oh right, before I continue, one thing I did want to mention is that last time, uh, whew, with Eris and uh, Beatrice, we saw that the, the dialogue changed one time, and Beatrice was aware of it. The dialogue that she had was... I forgot, let me double check it right now. Okay, so the exact line was, It appears that the Lady of Discord isn't going to use me just yet, and it changed to, isn't going to kill me just yet. So, I, I think Eris is the Lady of Discord, and, uh, she knew that she, uh, Beatrice knew that she was going to be used for some, some kind of plot here. And, uh, she, she was expecting to get killed, but nope. <laughs> Alright, Arya Steelwind. Commander White, you keep saying the perp instead of Steelwind. Uh, even though everyone else seems to think that she was responsible for this. Do you also su suspect that she's being framed? It just doesn't add up. If she did give herself Mage Blight, her actions would have been, wouldn't have been so deliberate. She's definitely not the type of person to just go around murdering people. Even if she was, she led a lot of the Inquisition's investigations recently. She's investigated plenty of homicides with us, and she knows exactly how we do things. Whoever did this got the job done, but they were sloppy about it. A bunch of witnesses saw her, and she didn't even try to hide herself using magic. So either she had Mage Blight, which doesn't match with her behavior, or she did this intentionally and wanted to get caught. Not a scenario makes any damn sense. Someone has to be framing her. That's the only reasonable explanation. Honestly, I'm not so sure about that either. What do you mean? You saw her when we arrested her, didn't you? She wanted us to lock her up. It's like she thought she was a danger to herself and the others. Right, that's the same impression that I got as well. If it weren't for the witness's statement, I'd be sure she gave herself mage blight. The strangest thing is that I've never seen her act that scared before. Something's really rattled her about what happened. Yikes. Beatrice Frega. Did you follow up on what I said about Beatrice? I know that she was in the room when Pierce and I fell unconscious. 
She has to be involved in this somehow. Well, she's already in prison, so we're already ahead on that account. But when we asked her what happened, she said that she couldn't remember anything. That's such an obvious lie. She has to be hiding something. Normally, I'd agree with you, but she's not the only one with missing memories. Steelwin also can't remember anything. What? It looks like you'll have to speak with her about that. Oh, I remember Redman, the principal of the school, said that there aren't spells that can manipulate memories, I think, or ma manipulate thoughts. And Eris could, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, we already know she's involved, but yeah. Anyways, what about Eris and the knight that was guarding her? Did they see anything? Uh, sorry, kid, but Eris Ilmatter has been missing since everything went down. What? Do you have any idea what happened to her? No, but I wouldn't be too worried. What? A witness of the crime is missing and possibly hurt. Look, kid, you may be a hotshot attorney, but I've been in this business a lot longer than you have. Some things... Sometimes when things happen to civilians, they get spooked and run away. I've seen it a million times. You feel like that he's not making as big of a deal of this as he should be. But you might have a point. Eris is the daughter of a crime lord, after all. She might have gone into hiding to avoid having to speak with the law enforcement. We don't have the resources to look for her, but I'm sure she'll turn up eventually. Well, I suppose there, we can't do anything about that now. But I still hope that she's okay. Anyways, what about the knight guarding Beatrice? Surely he didn't go missing as well. That's the thing. The knight that who was supposed to be watching her is one of the people who went comatose. We found him in front of the prayer room, too. Damn it! <laughs> what happened to him? To make matters worse, that Frega chick knows how to cast invisibility. Even if she was telling the truth, very few people would have actually seen her. But her guard was in front of the prayer room. She must have brought him there somehow. Beatrice's actions. You saw Beatrice Frega as you were losing consciousness. You only saw her for a brief moment, so it could have been an illusion. Regardless, that means that she somehow entered the prayer room at 2.30 p.m. A knight was assigned to guard Beatrice and kill her if Maranath attempted to escape. He was later found comatose in front of the prayer room. Eris Ilmatter, who was also with Beatrice when she disappeared, has been missing since the massacre. Anyways, would you happen to have a recent version of her spell compendium? Sure, we already have it on record. Beatrice's spell compendium. Wow, that's a, that's a pretty lengthy list. Beatrice's spell compendium. It contains the formulas for the following spells. Emilio Bond. Sleep. Mend wounds. Send message. Animate corpse. Necrotic blight. Invisibility. Feign death. And illusory disguise. Feign death? Huh. That's interesting. Emilio Bond. Mend wounds. Send message. These are all things that we've seen before. Animate corpse. Product Blight. Yeah. Oh, she has that too? Isn't that the super dangerous one? Yeah. Invisibility. Bane Death. Okay, this is one I'm curious about. So, School, Necromancy, Incantation, File Norma. Gesture, None. Duration, Indefinitely. Concentration, Yes. The caster must target a creature that's already cautious. While they concentrate on the spell, the target will appear to be dead. Oh. The target creature will stop breathing and their heart will stop beating. However, the life energies of this spell will keep them alive for the duration. I wonder if this cult can help manipulate the time of death. Aww. Illusory Disguise. Right. I forgot about how many spells she knew how to cast. First victim, Lloyd Von Tychtus. It's all a little difficult to take in. Still can't believe it. After everything he did, Mon Sanctus was just murdered. I'm surprised to hear that from you. Did he basically get away with offing Justin Wei? The way I see it, he got what he deserved. That still doesn't sit right with me. No matter who the victims might have been, no one deserves to die like that. Eh. Huh. Ah, you're definitely a bigger man than I am, and I'm tall. <laughs> Anyways, Von Sanctus' autopsy report said that he died of suffocation. We think the murderer overpowered him and choked him with a rope or something. That hardly sounds like something someone would do during a psychotic episode. Yeah, the more info I get, the more I think you might be onto something. But either way, 
The fire that the perp started in this room burnt his body. It didn't completely turn into ash, but it was pretty shod. Hmm. So that fire would have burned away any evidence of the minor wounds he had. Yeah, we're lucky we even discerned that he was hit with an evocation spell. Right, the autopsy report mentioned that too. But if a fire was started, is it possible that he died from smoke inhalation? Nah, the divination spell we use always identifies smoke inhalation as death by poisoning, not death by suffocation. Oh, I forgot they had that. <laughs> because we haven't really seen too many uses of divination magic. And now that the, the divination person is dead, well, <laughs> yeah. I suppose that kind of makes sense. But it's still a shame that we can't find out about how the murderer suffocated him. Oh, that was gonna be the second one, but alright. Spell compendiums. We still know very little about how the murders occurred. Do you have the records of each one of the spell victim's spell compendiums? They might help us understand what each of the victims was doing during the attack. Sure. Knock yourselves out. Garrick Pierce's spell compendium. We already saw this, so it's not too useful. Sybil's spell compendium. Okay, so it contains the formulas for the following spells. Slow fall. Foresight. <laughs> not, not much foresight was used in this case. <laughs> Strike true. Detect magic. Stone skin. She has a lot of defensive abilities. Look, with slow fall, she probably fall from high heights. Foresight, she can anticipate what's going to happen. Strike true, I have no idea. And stone skin, I imagine, would be something like, uh, gives yourself some kind of armor. <laughs> Fontanctus' was mage blade, force cage, send message, and mend wounds. Huh. Well, let's learn some new things. Alright, this was the same. This was the same. This was the same. You know, I'm kind of surprised at how little number of spells they know. But it seems like it's actually the average. It seems like people don't actually know too many spells. It's just that Celeste is a goddamn genius. <laughs> Force Cage. For the duration, the caster creates a magical 10 by 10 by 10 feet cube around a target within 30 feet of them. The walls of this cube are impenetrable and can't be destroyed by anything. Not even by spells that can normally dispel... S oh spell spell effects. Furthermore, any attempts to magically teleport into or out of the cube will fail. If there is more than one creature in the tar target space, they will be pushed away from the center of the cube. So, Force Cage was Von Sanctus's, and that might be the box around him. But that would mean that they wouldn't be able to attack him, though. Hmm. Slow fall. Okay, uh, Feathera. Points finger, index finger downwards, duration one hour, no concentration needed. The caster counteracts the force of gravity affecting them, causing them to fall significantly slower when airborne for the duration. Foresight. Okay, for him. Form a triangle with both hands. 24 hours. The caster invokes the ultimate form of divination magic to see brief glimpses of the near future. While this spell is active, the caster is able to sense danger seconds before it actually happens. Strike true. Divination. Nom optima. Non optimal. <laughs> is not optimal. Make a circle with a thumb and index finger. Ah, I see. Uh, 10 minutes and concentration. The caster increases their ability to predict the results of all their actions for the duration. This is useful for the purposes of aiming or doing other activities that rely on dexterity and skill. Detect magic. Alright, we already know this one. Even though this is the first time we actually got in our spell compendium, I think. And this- oh wow, we have all the things here, so, uh, when, when concentrating, the caster is able to see normally invisible magical traces left by magic. Magical traces are created two times when the spell is cast. The first is created by the position of the caster when the spell is cast. The second is created when the spell effect resolves or dissipates. The caster can identify the school of magic by- of any trace by color. So evocation red, transmutation yellow, conjuration scion, divination pink, abjuration white, and necromancy purple. Stone skin. Uh, terra protect. Uh, to terra protect. All right. Creates an X with both arms. Duration while concentrating. The caster creates a thick layer of stone around their body. This stone layer will deflect and protect the caster from any physical trauma. The stone layer can be slowly broken through continuous attacks. But as long as the caster concentrates on this, this spell, the stone layer will instantly repair itself. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot to work through. Yep, that's what happens when a bunch of mages are caught up in the middle of a murder. Honestly, you've been pretty lucky until now. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'll need to look over each of these spells when they become relevant. You think you found everything you can relating to Von Sanctus' murder? 
Perhaps we should move somewhere else. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't get a uh, Aria spell compendium and show it to us. But, uh, it is what it is. Kind of curious about the balcony. This is where we saw um, Sybil die. You arrive at the west facing uh, balcony of the cathedral. Oh, that must be the lake, I guess. Supposedly, this is where the murderer threw Sybil's body into the lake. Oh, hello there. I have no idea who it is. Oh! Old man. Okay. As you inspect the area, you catch the attention of an old man nearby. From his garb, he appears to be someone who worked at the cathedral. No, he's gonna be the person who who saw um, Arya. It wasn't the other one. Hmm. He looks like a church person after all. I don't believe that we've met before. What are you doing here? Sorry for the intrusion. I'm Tyrion Cuthbert. This is my bodyguard, Celeste McCoy. We're investigating the murders on the behalf of Prosecutor Steelwind. Tyrion Cuthbert, I have heard of you. He doesn't look nearly as criminal as I expected him to be. Judging from his thoughts, he probably hasn't heard many good things about you. But forgive my rudeness. I am Theon Arceus, High Speaker of the Church of Bahamut. Yep, this is the, this is the dude. So you're the one who saw Steelwind here during the murders. Do you mind if we ask you some questions? Huh. He scans you warily. I suppose there would be no harm in that. All right, but first, do you know that I'm an attorney? No. What do you? What are your thoughts about this high speaker? My apologies, but there's not much to say about that. All right. Oh, autopsy report of Garrick Pierce. Did you know Lord Pierce? He was one of the victims. I didn't know him well. Not to insult Hoss Pierce, but he wasn't a noble of high standing. I never had many opportunities to speak with him. What about Coraline? She was the head of one of the Four Pillar families. I did. It's quite unfortunate what happened to her. Of the four families, I felt that House Sybil was one of, one of the most loyal to the church. You decide not to voice your discontent for House Sybil. <laughs> what about Lord Von Sanctus? He was the head of House Von Sanctus. Yes, I knew him well. We often work together in matters of enterprise. Why would the church need to discuss the matter of enterprise? Perhaps I've already said too much. Huh. What do you know about me? See, you have heard of me, High Speaker. I have. He's not what I was expecting. You shouldn't believe every story you hear from the arist aristocracy. Ha! Huh. I, I don't know what you mean. What do you think about the- oh, nothing about- oh, wow. Most people do comment on Celeste, but I guess not him. I can't believe Lady Steelwind would do something like this. But I can't really doubt what I saw with my own eyes. Why was she acting so strangely? There's more to this than we're all seeing. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. For her sake, I hope you're right. Forgive me if I'm being rude, but what is a high speaker? You seriously don't know? How ignorant are you? Okay, that's a little rude. The Church of Bahamut seeks to honor and revere the scaled Lord Rathalion. We are all called to spread the word of his greatness throughout Wyvengard. The High Speaker leads the Church through its missions. Okay, let's see this area. There's some kind of debris on the ground. You pick up one of the pieces and you feel it in your hands. It appears to be some kind of gravel. Hmm. This balcony provides a perfect view of Lake Galakrond. A lot of people probably came here when the Grand Cathedral was open to the public. I can see a military stronghold in the distance. Oh, I guess you can see it, but I don't. Maybe it's just a little nub here. They must be able to see a lot from that high up. Oh, I kind of wish they had something on the, the ocean. It's a pretty beautiful background. Arcanum. Ah, the gravel is magical. There are traces of transmutation on the pieces of this debris. That would imply that a spell specifically targeted or created whatever this came from. I doubt that someone created these bits of gravel. It must have broken off from something else. Debris near the balcony. You found some bits of earth-like debris near the westward balcony. They have traces of transmutation magic on them. This also happens to be where Theon Arceus saw Arya Steelwind dumping Coraline Sybil's body. Alright, let's talk to the dude. What did you see? We heard that you saw the prosecutor acting strangely here. Could you tell us more about what you saw? Did it look like she was having a psychotic episode? I wouldn't go that far. 
but she was certainly acting strange. How did you come across her? Well, I was on my way to the prayer room. I always recite prayers from the draconic texts around that time. Wait, he was heading to the prayer room? Uh, was a letter that Garrick Pierce wrote for him? Huh. He does have white hair, but I thought that was from age. He's not gonna be related to Celeste, is he? Huh. When I saw her, I first thought that she was just enjoying the view of the lake. I was about to greet her, but when I approached her, I saw that she was throwing something off the edge of the balcony. Hmm. You must have seen her dumping Sybil's body. You're probably correct. I came to the same conclusion after they found that poor woman's body below us. Although... What is it? I only saw it for a second, so perhaps I'm wrong. But Lady Sybil was wearing much brighter colors this morning. Whatever Lady Steel went through into the lake, it looked much darker. What does that mean? I'm sorry. I can't really explain it. Perhaps I was just seeing things. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be, after all. It could have just been a trick of the light. Arceus's encounter. Dion Arceus was on his way to the prayer room to recite his prayers. On his way there, he spotted Arius Dion throwing something off of the west balcony, but he wasn't able to see what she threw. But after Coraline Sybil's body was found in Lake Galacrod, he assumed that the object must have been Sybil's body. However, he could have sworn that he saw something darker, but he's still not sure. Oh, I have a th oh, I have an idea then. I think it might be stone skin. So this is transmutation. And the debris near the balcony was tra had traces of transmutation. So I think she must have activated stone skin, which is why she was darker. And that's why there was transmutation magic on this and on the body, I believe. So she used that as a yeah, traces of transmutation. So she used that as a as self-defense, but she, maybe she got baked in it. <laughs> Or actually, no, it's cause of death of suffocation. Uh, maybe... Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how she would have suffocated, but... She, she probably activated stone skin as a... Act of, of defense. And that's what this was. And that's what he saw, because it was darker. The prayer room. Wait. If you saw Arya dumping Lady Sybil's body, she must have just murdered her. That means you must have been heading to where we were at the time. Oh? Were you praying there with Lord Pierce? Not exactly. What? That's not what the guards told me. The guards? Do you mean the ones standing watch outside the prayer room? Yes. They told me that P Pierce was praying with some of his, some acquaintance of his. He said the same thing to Lady Steelwind as well. Wait, Steelwind was there too? Yes. She appeared to be waiting for someone. Something. But anyways... I didn't want to disturb them, so I went back to my quarters to pray there. The High Speaker didn't see her fighting Celeste. She must have started her attack after he left, but why would she bother waiting? Either way, we can't exactly question those guards. Yeah, they're still comatose after the attack. Arceus' testimony. Eon Arceus was on his way to the prayer room to recite his prayers. On his way there, he spotted Arya Steelwind throwing something off of the west balcony. He wasn't able to see what she threw, but after... Okay, this is about the same. So the parts, the only parts after was, after he witnessing this, he attempted to enter the prayer room, but was turned away by the guards, knights guarding it. Huh, why didn't you hear anything? Actually, the high speaker's quarters aren't that far from the prayer room. How did you not hear anything? Ah, uh, that must have been because of the magical wards in my room. Magical wards? Are they there for security reasons? Not exactly. I actually suffer from chronic insomnia. Even the smallest sound will wake me up at night. Years ago, I had some mages enchant the walls so, so sound couldn't travel through them. I can't hear anything from outside the room once I shut my door. That does sound awfully convenient. But you doubt that he'll li he'd lie about something that you could verify so easily. Either way, you should make a note of this. Alright, soundproof room. Supposedly... Theon Arceus suffers from chronic insomnia and can be woken by even the small sounds. As such, the walls of the High Speaker's quarters are completely soundproof once he closes the door. This should explain why Arceus didn't hear the fight between Celeste McCoy and Arya Steelwind. Actually, I want to check the, the map just to see... Is he on the map? High Speaker's quarter, yeah. 
You believe that you found everything you can here. Perhaps you should move somewhere else. All right, this is gonna be definitely a... Uh, oh, she's gonna go get a lot of stuff. So we've... We've gone to the prayer room and the common room. Let's go to the garden. This seems like not as important. You arrive back at the cathedral's garden and come across that accursed statue again. It's staring into my soul. Just stop looking at it. As you move your attention away from the grotesque sculpture, you spot the crowned prince. He's sitting on a bench, guarded by some knights from the king's guard. His brow is furrowed, and he seems to be deep in thought. Oh, Mr. Cuthbert, and Miss McCoy too. What are you still doing here? We're trying to investigate what happened. We were looking around when we saw when we just happened to find you here. I see. Hmm. Are you okay? Yes. I was just thinking about how unfortunate this ordeal has been. I do hope Miss Steelwind is taking this well. Right. She is his fiancé, after all. He must be extremely worried about her. We're trying to find out exactly what happened. Do you mind if we ask you some questions? I... see. Well, I'll do whatever I can to help. Autopsy report for Coraline Sybil. I can't believe someone killed Lady Sybil. Did you know her well? Quite well. We had many debates about how her family ran the ju judicial system. I find them quite... frustrating. After speaking with her, I can kind of understand what you mean. Lloyd Von Sanctus is actually dead. And I just saw him this morning too. Yeah, despite my feelings about him, no one deserves to be killed in cold blood. If there's some silver lining, it's that he can no longer harm the people with his negligence. He must be still be thinking about what happened to Justin Wei. What about me? This whole situation is quite a mess. I do consider myself lucky that you're here, Mr. Cuthbert. I appreciate your trust, but I still can't make sense of what I've found so far. Well, if anyone can find out what happened, it's you. Aww. <laughs> he trusts us. I'm glad that you were with Mr. Cuthbert when they say struck, Miss McCoy. Who knows what would have happened if you weren't there. No, I failed completely. I let the murderer get past me. They could have killed Tyrion. You can't blame yourself for what happened. And we're both safe now, that's what matters. Yeah. I can't believe Miss Steelwind is being blamed for this. Although, I can't fault the King's God for that. Right, there were several witnesses who saw her, and Celeste's testimony shows that it wasn't someone else magically disguised at her. I hope she's doing okay. Okay, let's look at this, this tortured unicorn. What goes through the mind of such a tortured creature? What is with you and the statue? I don't know, but I can feel its emotions as, as if it were my own. It's a completely inanimate object, Tyrion! Rotario Arcana! How can we expect that there to be magic here for some strange reason and we're gonna be like, what? <laughs> All right, Steelwind's trial. You said that you two were investigating the murders. You weren't planning to defend Miss Steelwind, were you? If she would have me, she may be a competent prosecutor, but I have far more experience defending clients. Unfortunately, I, th I think the situation is more complicated than that. What do you mean? Several house leaders died today. We can't release this information to the public. Not after the news of William Frega's death has already spread. In the course of two months, we've lost not just one, but three members of the Pillar families. But the trial has to happen soon, or else the magical traces will disappear. From what I've heard, we will be holding a trial. But it will be handled privately and, and internally. I'm sorry to say that. You won't be permitted to serve in such a trial. Right. A majority of the nobility hates me, after all. You wouldn't be able to pull some strings, would you, Aster? Uh, I'm sorry. I'd like nothing more than to give you the opportunity to represent her. But I clearly have a personal attachment to this case. If I try to tip the trial in her favor, it will only harm her chances more. Right. I see what you mean. But even if we can't help her during the trial, we can still investigate if the crime was on her behalf. Yes. I would really appreciate that. If new evidence is found, perhaps we can exonerate Miss Steelwind of the charges against her. Oh, okay, gathering of nobles. After everything that's happened, I really need to know. Why were so many nobles gathered in one place today? Anyways. All four of the Pillar families were present. Ugh. I understand if you don't want to tell me, but this information could be vital in figuring out what really happened. No. I see your point. The truth is, We've all gathered here to mourn the death of my father, King Oli Oliver or, or, or Olivier. I'm just going to say Oliver. 
No, Olivier. I'm just gonna say King Oliver the Wyvernguard the ninth. Ah, okay. I thought it was gonna be their mother. I thought maybe the king would still be in power, but it was the, actually maybe the opposite. The king's gone, but they haven't really ha had someone to send the throne. Maybe his mother's still alive. I'm not sure. Wait, the king is dead. Oh. Oh, they have. Wait, actually. Oh, to mourn the death. Oh, the king died recently. Oh, I see. Yes, we want to avoid releasing this information to the public, so close to the death of William Frega. My father has been ill for quite some time, so we, we were prepared for this. Or at least, I thought I was. I also lost my mother when I was quite young. Okay, never mind. But it's still all a little hard to take in. I'm sorry. You have my condolences. Thank you. But if King Oliver is dead, that would make you... Yes, you are currently standing before King Aster de Wyvengard, ruler of our kingdom. Considering everything that's happened, he seems less than thrilled about that. Yeah, he, he's sad and kind of fearful. I suppose that explains why all of these nobles were gathered. Ah, <sighs> they came under the guise of paying their respects. But it's clear that they want to gather, get closer to the new king of Wyvengard. I think the Fregas were the only ones who generally came to give their condolences. Ah, I see. Beatrice Frega. Speaking of the Fregas, I think you need to know. I saw Beatrice before I was knocked out. Mm. I think she may have been the one that killed Garrick Pierce. Mm. Why? Why would she be there? I'm sorry. I know that she was your friend. We already know that she's not above committing murder. Uh, I, I see. I suppose if you're saying it, it must be so. But what possible reason would she have to be involved in something like this? I'm not so sure yet. But I plan to find out. Ah, it was her demon contract! Arya Stillwind. By the way, why- where were you during the murders? I remember you left with Stillwind when Celeste and I arrived at the cathedral. Ah, oh, yes. Stillwind and I left to speak with High Speaker Arceus in his quarters. What was your meeting about? It was actually about our wedding. With my father's death, Lord Stillwind wanted to finally make our union official. Uh, oh! I would congratulate you two, but considering the circumstances, I understand, and I appreciate your words nonetheless. Anyways, how long did this meeting last? I believe we spoke with him until 1.40 p.m. But Von Sanctus died at 2.05. That means that she began her rampa rampage less than half an hour after that meeting. Was there anything off about her behavior? Now that you mention it, something about her demeanor changed. We were speaking of the wedding when she briefly abruptly left. I asked her where she was going, but she ignored me. That sounds similar to what happened when Celeste fought her. There's no way that she was affected by Mage Blight. Marriage meeting. From 1.15 to 1.40 p.m., Astrid the Wyvengard and Ari Steelwind spoke with High Speaker Theon Arceus about their upcoming wedding. At 1.40 p.m., Steelwind abruptly left the meeting and didn't answer Astrid when he asked where she was going. So, I think Von Sanctus died at 2.05, so that was really close afterwards. I honestly didn't think much of it at the time. I'm quite used to her giving me the cold shoulder. Right. <laughs> it's possible that the steel wind the witness saw wasn't actually real. Does this mean that the steel wind that attended the meeting was also fake? What did you see? Anyways, what happened after your meeting with the high speaker? Did you see steel wind after that? Actually, I find myself caught up in something else entirely. At 2 p.m., I went to pay respects at my father's coffin. But apparently, someone has set a magical trap there. What? It was a glyph of contingency. Glyph of contingency. School of evocation. Call Tin Gen. Gesture. The gesture of the contingent spell. Duration. 24 hours. Concentration. None. When casting the spell, the caster must choose another spell they know. The caster casts the spell, but the contingent spell doesn't come into effect. Instead, it takes effect when a certain condition specified by the caster upon casting the spell is fulfilled. The contingent spell takes effect immediately when that condition is fulfilled. Ah, huh. So it's like putting a condition on a spell and having that spell activate when that condition is fulfilled. So it could delay a spell until certain conditions are fulfilled. That's actually a pretty cool, cool spell to be honest. I have heard of that spell. It's like a trap that you can set. 
you can infuse any spell into it. But it requires a second contingent spell to place that trap. Which spell was it? It was a forced cage, targeting me. Was the murderer trying to attack Aster too? I don't think so. They would have used a more lethal spell if they wanted to. But from the sounds of it, Force Cage can't be dispelled. So Aster would have been trapped inside of it for that full hour. We think the murderer used it as a distraction. Because of that trap, the King's Guard consolidated most of their attention and forces onto my location. As a result, there are fewer people regarding Von, Von Sanctus, Sybil, and Pierce. And the ones that were there all fell comatose. They can't tell us what happened to them. The Trapped King. At 2 p.m., Aster the Wyvern went to pay respects to at his father's coffin. Unbeknownst to him, however, there was a glyph of contingency set to trap him inside a forced cage. The trap triggered and Aster was wrapped in that magical cage for its duration. This caused the King's Guard to consolidate their forces at Aster's location. As a result, Lord Von Sanctus, Coraline Sybil, and Garrick Pierce were left with far fewer guards defending them. And yet another inexplicable event is added to the list. After everything you've learned, you highly doubt that Steelwind was affected by Mage Blight. So someone must be behind what happened, but who? I think we're done here. Anyways, it seems like he told you everything he knows. You probably didn't witness much after he was trapped in that forced cage. You should move somewhere else. Alright, so how many places are left? I think it's the Nave and the Inquisition Dungeon. We'll finish up this church. I'm gonna guess Lucio Steelwind here. Oh no. She attacked a member of the royal family and killed several nobles. What else is there to investigate? The laws are clear about what we must do. We should execute her immediately. Alaric. Oh, wait. Ah, oh, what voice? <clears throat> Alaric, this situation is far too much import to make such rash decisions. We need to approach this calmly and carefully. As you return to the nave, you spot the young prince in argument with what the nobleman they saw earlier. So, who are you? Who are you? Now that you think about it, you still have no idea who he is. Oh, it's you two. Your Highness. And I don't think we've been introduced. Hmm. Oh, he has a scar. I just noticed that. What? Ah, I see that you're still as insolent, insult, insolent, insolvent as ever. You stand before Sir Remus Virgili, Archduke and Royal Vizier to the Wyvern Guard throne. The Royal Vizier! It's Council. Ah. <laughs> uh, Grand Vasir Napa. <laughs> That's the only thing I thought of. Ah, I believe he means advisor. Remus Virgil. -A. I'm just gonna call him Virgil. <laughs> Archduke? You didn't even know the Kingdom of Wyvergard had a title like that. Why haven't you heard of him before? Why are you two here anyways? I thought that the cathedral was closed for the investigation. We're investigating what happened on the behalf of Prosecutor Steelwind. I see. Anyways, I have much to attend to. I'll be taking my leave. You sense a tinge of anxiety. Is he avoiding you? Actually, since we have you here, we have some questions for you. The both of you. Ha! Huh. You should know your place, Knave. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I thought this was like a crease from maybe like... Like... <laughs> Like the lighting, or maybe him like having wrinkles, but no, that that was a scar. My attorney's Boonstone! It's a good thing that you came out of this unharmed. A lot of people lost their lives today. Huh. Steelwind knows better than to harm a member of the royal family. Yeah, all she did was cast a spell on you and trap Aster in a force cage. It's a little terrifying how untouchable he thinks he is. Okay, his dialogue is a little bit long. It's that entire thing I just said, so I'm just gonna present profiles. Every time I see you, something horrible ends up happening. It's as if you bring trouble wherever you go. That's not the first time I heard that today. <laughs> I doubt it's that. My occupation just puts me in these positions. So you go around looking for trouble then? Oh, well, he's not wrong. I can't believe Lady Steelman would do something like this. After everything my brother has done for her, this is how she repays him? There's more to this than we're all seeing. She can't be responsible for this. Huh, we'll see. I can't believe I've gone this long without knowing who you are. I have. Why haven't I ever heard of you before, Your Grace? His Grace does not see it fit to mingle with the common folk. He only concerns himself with the matters befitting of his station. Uh, he's like, oh man, this this kid. <laughs> let's look around the cathedral. The rows upon seats. Okay, that's. Oh, it's probably the same thing as before. Stained glass window. 
Altar at the end of the room. Yep. The and no magic. We're good. Let's talk. What did Virgil see? Your grace. Where were you when the murders took place? Just what are you trying to insinuate? Please, Alarak. There's no need for that. To answer your question, I was speaking with Lady Fre- He was speaking with Lady Frega's familiar? <laughs> Tracker? No. It was a demon who calls himself Marinath. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, okay, that makes a lot more sense. What? Why would you want to speak with him? He was actually the one that sent for me. According to him, he had some information that was of great import to me. You didn't make a contract with him, did you? Of course not. What kind of desperate fool do you take me for? No, he gave me the information he had freely. But why would he do that? Demons are supposedly always trying to trick humans into making deals with them. Looking back, it must have been a distraction. What a fool I was. I knew he was playing me. But I knew he couldn't tell lies. The information he had was far too important to ignore. If you don't mind me asking, what was the information about? Mmm. I'm sorry, but I can't reveal what he told me. It could endanger the people I care about. But rest assured, I doubt it has anything to do with the massacre. It 100% <laughs> does have something to do with the massacre. Your Grace, we've only just met. I can't exactly take your word for it. I suppose that's fair. But believe me when I say that I plan to take this information to my grave. That's ominous. But he's clearly intent on keeping their conversation a secret. Anyways, several members of the King's Guard were watching us. They can verify my alibi. How long did this conversation last? I arrived to speak with him at 1.50pm. I didn't leave until 3.10, so they had the entire time. Virgile's alibi. The demon Marinath called Archduke Remus Virgile to meet with him at 1.50pm. He apparently had a very important information that Virgile couldn't ignore. Virgile spoke with Marinath until 3.10pm. The members of the King's Guard guarding, uh, guarding the demon can verify this. He was accounted for during the time frame of the murders. Why would Marinath go through the trouble of distracting him in the first place? Whoever orchestrated this also used the force cage to trap Aster. Were they trying to distract the forces in the cathedral? Or were they trying to keep certain people out of the crossfire? Either way, it's clear that Beatrice has a lot to answer for. Steel wind spell. Your Highness, we heard that the prosecutor cast a spell on you when you saw the, her, the fire in the common room. Can you tell us more about what happened? I can't believe she attacked a member of the royal family. She is completely irresponsible with her magic. I understand your feelings about this, but we can't say for certain that she inflicted mage blight on herself. You don't even know if it was actually her. I saw her with my own eyes. Plenty of other people did too. Either way, where did this happen? It was on the path outside of the common room. I saw smoke coming from the building. I saw steel and walking away from it. This must have been after she murdered Von Sanctus. I had a feeling I already know the answer, but was she behaving erratically? No, she very deliberately cast a spell on me, which once again implies that Mage Blight wasn't behind this. Do you know which spell she cast on you? I'm not sure. I've never been affected by a spell like that before. From the magical traces on him, we know that it was a transmutation spell. Transmutation spells manipulate and change physical matter. It's scary to think about what it might do to a human body. Are you sure he's okay? Lord Asclepius inspected him, and he doesn't appear to have any lasting injuries. We're hoping the spell effects were only temporary. Can you describe what you felt while you were affected by it? That might help us identify which spell it was. Well, I was extremely dazed, and my ears were ringing. My vision was also partially blurred, as if my mind were, was in some sort of fog. Whenever I tried to speak, I couldn't form words from, with my mouth. I could only make grunting sounds. I couldn't walk either, so I had to crawl on the floor. I'm sorry you had to go through that. That must have been traumatic. Ah, uh, what kind of transmutation spell would do that to him? It had to be something that affected his senses. Do we have anything in our inventory spell list that has that? I got it. It must have been shaped liquid, but they were shaping the liquids inside him, and he was like, <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Steel wins the meter. You already told us that she wasn't acting erratically, but was there anything off about her demeanor? I only saw her for a moment, but she was definitely different than usual. She was completely emotionless. E yeah, that's exactly what she was like when I fought her too. It was like she was an arcing construct. Her movements were almost robotic. Wait, are there any arcing constructs on the cathedral grounds? No, not for lack of trying on Lord Von Tectus's part. The High Speaker and I have specifically forbidden that staff here from using them. Hmm, 
It would have been really convenient if it was all just done using a construct. Although, you are a little tired of seeing them in your cases. <laughs> Anyways. Well, was anyone else around when Steelwind cast that transmutation spell on you? No, she moved away quickly after she incapacitated me. And even if someone was around, I don't think I could have seen them anyways. Alex's testimony. Alex, the Wyvern Guard saw Arya Steelwind exiting the common room. She saw that a fire had started here, but when she, when she asked Steelwind what was going on, she cast a transmutation spell on him. The spell blurred his vision and put him in a daze. His ears were ringing, and he was unable to speak or walk properly. He could only move by crawling on the ground. Strangely, no one saw him while he was in this state. Commander White also said that he was surprised when no one saw the prince until after the spell was wore off. What happened to him? That covers Alaric's account of what happened, and we even got the Archduke's statement too. But there's still one last person we need to speak to. Arya! She, she and Beatrice supposedly have no memory of what happened. Ugh, if you're only Beatrice saying that, I probably doubt it. But if Steelwind also doesn't have any memories, it becomes a lot more credible. She definitely has the missing pieces we need to put this together. Are you going to the dungeon to speak with her? I am. Wonderful. I'll be accompanying you. What? As a royal advisor, I have a vested interest in the investigation. While I trust Lucio to leave no stone unturned, I hear that you have quite the talent for seeing what the crown cannot. Whew. Well, it's not as if you have the authority to stop him. You still don't know him very well. You need to be wary of, of what you say in front of him. Alright, let's go to the Inquisition dungeon. This will probably be the last part of the investigation. We arrive at the dungeon to see the prosecutor sitting in a holding cell. She seems extremely stressed, as if she's trying to figure out something out. Ah! Oh, Mr. Cuthbert! And your grace! Steelwind gives a wary look to the Archduke. How are you doing? As best I can, all things considered. What brings you here? We're trying to investigate everything that happened. I see. I was wondering if you can answer some of our questions. Hmm. Steelwind, I know your situation is pretty grim right now, but you know that you can trust me. You're not the person I'm worried about. At this moment, I don't even know if I can trust myself. What? Um... Are these gonna be the same? Only one locked door leads in the cell. Yeah. Barred window. Yeah. Torches. Yeah. No magic. Alright. What about me? I'm glad that you are not unharmed, Mr. Cuthbert. I was worried when I saw you next to Pierce's corpse. Hmm. Well, I definitely got the least of it. <laughs> I should consider myself lucky that whoever did this decided not to kill me. Celeste, I heard that I fought you during my the massacre. I apologize if I hurt you in any way. Hmm. Celeste? Uh, sorry, it's just a lot to take in. A few hours ago, it really felt like you were trying to kill me. I won't fault you for feeling that way. I'm truly sorry. I'm sorry about what happened, Celeste. I can't imagine the lack of closure you feel right now when I present its, uh, Garrick Pierce's t uh, profile. But no, I don't care about that anymore. I'm just glad that Tyrion is safe. I can't believe he's lost so many house leaders in the course of a few months. Now that my father is the uh, only head of the four pillars that still lives. Uh, Lucio Stewin is her father, so it'd probably be best not to point out how suspicious that is. I can't believe I was forced to attack Prince Alaric. Don't feel too guilty. He doesn't seem to have any lasting injuries. Regardless, he's much too young to experience something like that. I'm relieved that his majesty was unharmed during the massacre. Whoever orchestrated this trapped him in a force cage. They must have used him as a distraction while they went after their true targets. As callous as it is, I'm glad that he wasn't their real target. I don't know what I would do if anything happened to him. Alright, let's jump into it. What happened? Well, we heard that you don't have any memories of what happened. Is that true? It is. No matter how much I try, I can't recall anything. What's the last thing you remember? I believe I was me leaving my meeting with the High Speaker and His Majesty. After the meeting, I was planning to return to the nave to speak with my father. But I suddenly felt extremely nauseous. I thought some fresh air might help me feel better, so I went to the balcony. The one over- The one over Lake Gal Galacrond? Yes, that's one. The last thing I remember was losing consciousness as I looked at the lake. Oh, she went to the lake first. And Von Sanctus was the first one to die, who was on the other side in the common room. And did you cast any magic before this happened? No, I didn't. Hmm. Are you sure you don't remember anything after that? I don't. All I remember is a waking up to the sound of someone sobbing. It was Celeste. She was crying over your unconscious body, Mr. Cuthbert. Ah. Uh. Seawind's testimony. 
Ari Steelwin has no memories of what happened after she left her meeting with Theon Arceus and Aster the Wyvernguard. After she left the meeting, she began heading to into the nave to meet with her father. However, she suddenly felt nauseous and went to the westward balcony. She lost consciousness soon afterwards. She later gained her consciousness in the prayer room when she heard Celeste McCoy crying over her unconscious body. She did not cast any magic before she fell unconscious. Magic that can affect the mind. I feel like we've completely ruled out Mage Blight. So I doubt that's why you can't remember anything. Are there any spells that can spe specifically modify or destroy people's memories? It would certainly explain a lot of this. No. Arcane spells can only affect the physical world. But throughout history, mages have attempted to develop spells that can affect the mind. There's no recorded history of any of them succeeding. But you're assuming that the arcane spells are the only type of magic that exists. What? I think you've observed it already. There are magical creatures in this world that don't use arcane magic. Isn't that right, Mr. Cuthbert? Uh, what? Does... does he know about the Eye of Horus? Huh? I'm not sure what you're trying to imply. Don't take me for a fool. Several of my associates attended Frega's trial, and they all heard what the demon referred to you as. Heavens born. If you if I learned that Lumina had anything to do with this, Your Grace, I am not an agent of the theocracy. And even if what you're saying is true, I wasn't the one who manipulated Steelwind's memories. Hmm. But I suppose you raise a good point. If something affected Steelwind's memories, it wasn't necessarily an arcane spell. In fact, it couldn't have been an arcane spell. It was definitely something else. You're probably right. Which proves that I'm responsible for the murders. What? <laughs> Arya did this? You just said that you don't have any memories of what happened. Why are you so convinced that you're responsible for this? I told the Inquisition before, but I saw Beatrice before I passed out. She's clearly involved in this somehow. There's more to this than you realize, Mr. Cuthbert. For the past few months, the Inquisition and I have been investigating a string of seemingly unrelated murders. During each of those cases, we were able to apprehend the perpetrator without issue, but there was always something off about them during questioning. The murders were always abnormally gruesome and passionate, and each of the perpetrators said the same thing. They all said that they had no choice. No choice? Cases like this have been occurring throughout Wyvernguard, and very little connects the perpetrators to each other. All except for one thing. Each of them acted as if someone had controlled them against their will. They're probably just desperate. Most murderers try to make excuses after they're caught. They could have just been in complete denial. Orm said the same thing, but these cases were far too similar to, for me to ignore. I wonder if they were telling the truth. Perhaps each of these murders was committed by an unknown party. I didn't have any concrete evidence, but I knew I was getting closer to... something. Huh. Purple Conspiracy. Steelwind, I don't mean to be rude, but this sounds... completely insane? You don't even have any physical evidence to prove those murders are connected. There's one piece of evidence, that's, but it's hardly concrete. The mark? But let's tie each of these cases together. She takes out a small parchment from her pocket and shows it to you. Huh? It's a purple symbol. Uh, okay. Several of the people we arrested had an item with a symbol on it. None of them could have remembered where it came from, or even what it was. But they all somehow knew that it was called the Pebble Mark. But there has to be an explanation for this. It could have just been some esoteric superstition that we don't know about. If that's true, then ask yourself one thing. Where did I get this parchment from? You don't mean... I found it in my pocket after I was properly confined. Whoever I've been chasing must have left it there to taunt me. For all I know, they could have controlled my body and forced me to draw this symbol myself. Either way, this this all but proves that the massacre at the cathedral is related to it. The purple mark. It has some sort of strange symbol. Earth Ewan calls it the purple mark. She thinks it has some relation with her mind control conspiracy. Supposedly, this mark has been found at the scene of several gruesome murders throughout Wyvernguard. Arya felt that she was getting close to, to the truth. When she regained consciousness after the murder, she found a paper with the symbol in her pocket. Arya's fate. I don't want to dismiss what you said, but this definitely won't hold up in court. Nor should it. If my mind has been compromised, I can't take the risk of leaving this dungeon. Otherwise, I could end up harming more people. Wait, are you planning to spend the rest of your life in prison? If that's what is necessary to keep everyone safe. But what about Aster? Weren't you two supposed to be married to? Oh, just a couple of days from marriage. He's the king now, and you can't rule Wyvernguard alongside him from a holding cell. You're correct, but he's always been a remarkable person. He should have no problem finding another sutress. And she's like, Aah! You feel an overwhelming sadness emanating from her as she says that. Arya. Uh, no. 
What? You're not going to sacrifice everything for someone else's actions. Mr. Cuthbert, I'm not going to risk more lives. If I were to hurt his majesty, I would never be able to forgive myself. Please don't ask that of me. Hmm. Oh, there's an argument. Honestly, this has gone on for quite a long time. This might be the last part, but I feel like we're gonna have to do this and, well, do something with Beatrice. So I think, I think I'm gonna stop here for today. I'm kind of beat because that was, that was pretty long and my voice is kind of dying. So I'll take a break here. But yeah, we'll continue with this argument next time. And until then, I will be seeing you. See ya.